that you know. If you don't fully understand an answer, please, a question, please say so. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Did you drive to work this morning? Yes, sir. Did you drive from the plant to this office? Yes, sir. Okay. So any medication you're on today doesn't affect your abilities to drive? No, it shouldn't. Did you do anything to prepare for today's deposition? What do you mean, did I do anything as in this morning? Any preparation? Did you review any documents? Yes. What did you review? I reviewed my leave book for the last week. For, for this deposition? Last... Yeah. Any other documents you reviewed? Um, not, that, not that I can recall at this time. Did you talk to anybody about today's deposition? I talked to my manager, let him know I was leaving the building because I had a deposition and I have a young man that drove down with me who knew I was coming to a deposition. Did you talk to agency counsel about today's deposition? Agency counsel, you mean Mr. 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 Dana? Yeah. yeah, I talked to him about coming So you did talk in. to somebody? Did you talk to agency counsel about any questions that you may be asked at today's deposition? This morning, no. Any time, did you talk to the agency counsel about any questions that you may be asked at today's deposition? I'm sorry, I don't fully understand your question. Did you discuss with Mr. Morris, the agency's counsel, any questions that you may be asked at today's deposition? You're saying that today's deposition. I, I really don't understand your question. Did no, you I did not. To, did you talk to Mr. Marsh yesterday? Yes. About today's deposition? Yes. Did he discuss with you any questions that you might be asked? No, he did not know what questions I might be Did he coach you on asked. any possible answers? No. Did you supply all the emails regarding this EEO to agency counsel? That I'm aware of, that I have, yes. Okay. What's your title? Manager of Maintenance Operations, Tampa PNDC, Tour 2. Who's your employer? United States Postal Service. When did you first start at the Postal Service? In May of 2000. In May of 2000, what job position did you hold? I was a maintenance mechanic. When did you become a maintenance supervisor? I think 2004. I would have checked my records. I don't know off the top of my head. When did you become a maintenance manager? 2008. Do you have any degrees from an accredited college or university? No. Do you require your supervisors to submit employee schedules to you before being publicly posted? I do at this time. Do you initial these schedules? I do at this time. Do you make changes to, your, to schedules your supervisors present to you? No. Have you ever made any changes to schedules as a manager prior to the schedules being posted? No. I send anything that is out of the ordinary or that is wrong, I have the supervisors re-review them. I do not make changes. I point out errors to them. Is it normal for a supervisor to bring employees in on their day off without getting your approval? Yes. Would you consider yourself a hands-on manager? I would think so. Is Kirk Tostage your senior electronic technician? I believe he is. He's told me he is. Were you ever a supervisor? Was I ever Kurt's supervisor? Were you ever Mr. Tostage's supervisor? I don't know if I ever had ETs under me, but he may have been. Were you his manager between January 1st, 2011 and October 14th, 2011? I was the manager of the department he's in, yes. Are you aware of any disciplinary problems for attendance during the 26 years Mr. Tostage's work, Mr. Tostage has worked for the Postal Service? I am aware of attendance issues in the last year. Before then, no. So prior to that, 26 years and not one documented case of discipline for attendance for Mr. Tostage. Is None that correct? None that I'm aware of. Okay. Mr. Johnson, I'm going to read to you your affidavit, ROI, page 223, question 14. You can open the ROI right there, which is in front of you. Page 223.
Are you there? I believe so. Okay, question number 14. This is from Linda Jones, EEO investigator to you. Were you made aware that the complainant's medical information was unsecured and in plain view on the desk of former employee supervisor John Steele? If yes, how did you become aware? Can you please read to me your answer in its entirety? On Mr. Tostage came to see me and bought his medical documentation, which he claimed was left on former supervisor John Steele's desk. Mr. Tostage was upset about it, and at that time, I asked him why Mr. Steele had his medical documentation since Mr. Steele was not his supervisor. Mr. Tostage said he gave the documentation to Supervisor Steele. I went to Mr. Steele's office and questioned him about the documentation. Supervisor Steele assured me that this documentation was something that Mr. Tostage placed on his desk. Supervisor Steele said he did not realize it was on his desk and it was under other papers and he removed the papers at that time. Mr. Steele admitted to me he made an paper, I'm sorry, he made an error and corrected the error the day I talked to him. I gave him the lecture that medical documentation should be under lock and key or sent to the medical unit. Can you go to ROI page 47, please? 00047. Okay, please read the first four sentences of the second paragraph, starting with on September 6, 2011. On September 6, 2011, Conrad Johnson, manager of maintenance operation, responded to Consley's allegations by stating Consley informed him that his medical documentation was left on the desk by, Mr. S by Supervisor John Steele. Mr. Johnson informed Consley he would speak with the supervisor. Mr. Johnson stated that he was unable to speak to Supervisor Steele because he abruptly retired. Mr. Johnson stated Council Lee has been out of an extended period of time. Okay. And I'm, I'm good. Second paragraph, that's it. So on November 30, 2011, in your affidavit, you remember all that detail? I don't fully understand your question. I can refer back to page 223 of the ROI. Okay. Which is almost six months after the incident that that page is dated, correct? Okay. What's the date on that page? The date on this page is 11-30-2011. Who signed that page? I did. Okay, what is it? What is it? Is it your affidavit? Yes, it is. Okay. In your September 6, 2011 response to Patty Middleton is different than your November 30, 2011 response. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay, was your September 2nd, 2011 statement regarding this incident false? No, my statement wasn't false. Maybe Patty wrote down something different from what I told her. Are you aware of the May 17, 2011 medical notes never made it up to the medical unit that were on John Steele's desk? No, I'm not aware of that. Do you have any idea where they might be? I have no clue. Are you aware that you're still under oath? Yes, I am. Okay. Are you aware that Mr. Tostage had medical restrictions on 5411? You can close that ROI right now. I'll repeat the question. Are you aware that Mr. Tostage had medical restrictions on 5411? Five, 5411, that would have been May 11th? Correct. I cannot recall that. Are you aware that Mr. Tostage was sent home on 51011, one day after your supervisor, Mr. Owensby, signed Mr. Tostage's CA2 workman's comp claim? Again, based on the date, I cannot recall that based on the date. 
Are you aware that Mr. Tostic filed an EEO in June of 2011? I am aware Mr. Tostic filed an EEO. I do not know what date he filed an EEO. Are you aware that Mr. Tostic was charged AWOL in October of 2011? I am aware he was charged an AWOL. I do not would know what date he was charged an AWOL. Are you aware that Mr. Tossage's medical documentation was left out in the open on Supervisor Steele's desk in June of 2011? I was told by Mr. Tossage it was left out, and I approached Mr. Steele about it. So I am aware of it. The date I am not aware of. After he retired, Mr. Steele? No, Mr. Steele was still there at the time. Do you personally have knowledge of Mr. Tossage filing a grievance in the first 26 years of service? With not that I'm aware of. Okay, I'm going to give you copies of the ROI instead of you ruffling through it. I'm going to give you copies contained in the ROI of those pages. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you a copy of ROI page 00295. Do you remember signing a litigation hold notice for Linda Jones, the EEO investigator? Yes, I do. Okay. Please read out loud the highlighted areas on page 00295 of document in front of you. I have searched and identified all sources of information potentially, re potentially related to this dispute. And then the next thing that's highlighted says save. Excuse me. I have saved all material that are potentially relevant to, the, to this complaint, including my personal notes and emails, where I have found a hard copy or electronic copy of the same documents, I have preserved both versions, either by myself or with assistance of information technology uh, staff. I have saved emails and any other electronic storage information and have taken steps to ensure that the files I have identified are preserved against automatic deletion. Okay. Have you abided by the signed document? To the best of my knowledge. Have you segregated all emails and documents regarding the CEO complaint and segregated them? Most of them that I'm aware of, yes. Most of them? That what I'm aware of. What didn't you? All the ones I am aware of, yes. Where are they? They're on a hard drive in my office. Did you provide copies to agency counsel? I provide copies of the stuff they asked for. I'm not sure which ones you're talking about. Anything contained on that hard drive that pertains to the CEO that you've saved? My deposition and stuff was on there. Yes, I provided that. Your deposition was on there? My uh, statement, my ROI, whatever you call it. Emails. That's I saved it, yeah. Emails. Did you provide copies to the agency's counsel? The agency's counsel, you're talking about the postal counsel. Mr. What? Morris, did you provide any copies to Mr. Morris, the agency's counsel? Yes. Okay, you did. Emails. You, were, you provided copies of your emails to that Mr. That I had. That you had. Okay. When? When Jessica asked for them. If I had them, I gave them to her. If I didn't give it, it's because I don't have any. Have you saved all the emails regarding this complaint? The EO complaint, the, this EEO complaint? The ones that I have. Okay. And you did supply them to the agency counsel? The ones that I have. Okay. Did you contact someone in IT to retrieve pertinent information? No. Why not? Because I didn't know I had to. You signed this litigation notice dated when? 11-30-2011. Did you contact IT then? No. Why not? Because everything I had, I thought, was all I needed. Do you remember an email that you sent to Mr. Tossers on June 3rd, 2011? <clears throat> Do I remember it? No. I was told there was one. I searched for it and no. Did you get with IT to maybe retrieve that email? No, I did not. Why not? Didn't think about it. You signed this letter, the litigation hold notice, dated 11-30-2011, stating you would. Okay. Why didn't you? Because I didn't. I didn't. Did any representative of the agency inform you that you are no longer required to save these documents? No. Okay. 
Will you abide by the litigation hold notice if you suspect the emails are missing? Yes, I will. Will you get with the local IT department to retrieve sure, these will. documents? I know I have to, yes, I will. Will you do that today? If that's what I'm being instructed to do, yes. Will you formally request the local IT to help you ascertain if the June 3rd, 2011 specific email from you to Mr. Tostage, as stipulated in the, the litigation hold notice, can be retrieved? Yes, I will. Okay. Are you aware of the agency's response to complaint and submission of fact number 26? What is fact number 26? It states, Mr. Johnson does not have a copy of the email and he does not recall this specific email. No, I don't. Is it possible you wrote an email to Mr. Tostich June 3rd, 2011? I do not know. So you will formally request local IT to help you retrieve all the emails okay. pertaining to yes, the CEO? Yes. Let me finish the question before you answer. She cannot take two people talking at once. So you will formally request local IT to help you retrieve all the emails pertaining to the CEO case as stipulated in the litigation hold notice? Yes, I will. This was supposed to be done November 30th, 2011. Do you understand that? I understand that. So you will copy Mr. Morris and all correspondence with your local IT? Who's Mr. Morris? Agency's oh, counsel. Yes. yes. Will you copy me at my USPS.gov email also? I would prefer you get it from him. Did the agency representative request any segregated documents from you? Segregated documents. I'm not sure what you're asking about. Did you save any documents? The only thing I saved was the deposition statements and the items that I was told anything that had to do with Mr. Tostich to put in a separate file. Including, including emails, correct? Including emails. Okay. When did you supply them to the agency's counsel? I don't know the exact date. I don't know dates. I'll represent to you that everything that he had that was responsive to your discovery request was provided to me during the period in which we were responding to your requests. Okay. In your response, no emails were received in, in your answers to the, uh, for the production of documents. That's correct. But you do have emails segregated, correct? You're saying emails. I don't, I don't know if I have emails. If there were emails, they're separated and they're segregated under Kurt Tostich. Okay. What's on the file, I do not know because I did not review the file today. Who saved the files? I have moved them to that location. Okay. You, again, you're, just, you're going to request local IT help to retrieve any missing any documents? Any files, yes. Okay. For the record, DRAC, D-R-A-C, is an acronym for District Reasonable Accommodation Committee. AWOL, A-W-O-L, is an acronym for Absent Without Leave. A letter of warning, L-O-W, L-O-W is an acronym for a letter of warning. Did you personally contact the DRAC on Mr. Tostage's behalf on the following dates, Mr. Johnson? Yes or no to the following. I'm going to ask you eight dates. On 5-4-11, when he brought in a doctor's note regarding his hearing loss. Did you personally contact the DRAC on Mr. Tostich's no, behalf? Not. On 5 10 11, when he was sent home for a week because of medical restrictions handed in on 5 4 11, did you personally contact the DRAC on Mr. Tostich's behalf? No, I did not. On 5 17 11, when he returned to work with new medical restrictions, did you contact the DRAC on Mr. Tostich's behalf? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. On 5 27 11, when he wrote an email to your supervisor, Steve Owensby, regarding concerns about his medical restrictions, did you contact the DRAC on Mr. Tostich's behalf? Not that I'm aware of. On 6 11 when he wrote an email to you about his medical restrictions, did you contact the DRAC on Mr. Tostich's behalf? Not that I'm aware of. On 6 11 when you responded in an email to Mr. Tostich concerning his medical restrictions, did you contact the DRAC on Mr. Tostich's behalf? Not that I'm aware of. On 6 11 when you got back from the noise level test, you got back the noise level test results from the safety specialist, did you contact the DRAC on Mr. Tostich's behalf? Not that I'm aware of. On 6 13 11, when Mr. Tostich presented to management with updated medical restrictions, their pages. No. Did you contact the DRAC on Mr. Tostich's behalf? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Two forty six, two forty seven. 
Mr. Johnson, I'm going to give you pages 246 and 247 of the ROI so you don't have to shift, ruffle through it. Looking at page 247, tell me the date Supervisor Owens be signed Mr. Tosh's workman's comp claim for his hearing loss, his loss of hearing. Five nine eleven. Okay. The day after Supervisor Owens be signed Mr. Tosh's workman's comp claim CA two in front of you, he was sent home. Correct on five ten two thousand eleven. Not, I'm not aware of, I'm not, I don't remember dates. 3971. I'd like to enter into ex exhibits, exhibit number one, it's a 3971, signed by Mr. Tostage. Mr. Johnson, what is a postal form 3971? It's a leave form. Request for notification of absence. Mr. Johnson, what type of absence is indicated on this leave form? Sick leave. What is other. listed what is listed next to other? Sent home. To your best estimate, how long was Owens be a supervisor in May 2011? How long had Mr. Owens be been a supervisor in May of 2011? Again, I don't know the date that Mr. Owens be started his supervision. At this time, will you personally instruct Mr. Owensby in the proper procedure to send him home? Let me rephrase. At this time, will you personally instruct Mr. Owensby to send Mr. Tostage home on 5-10-2011? I don't know if I instructed gave Mr. Um, Owensby guidance or not. If he asked me about how something works, I may have, but I didn't personally instruct him, go send Kurt Tostich home, if were you, that's what you're saying. Were you aware of medical documentation restrict, containing restrictions for Mr. Tostich at that time? I was aware of Mr. Tostich bringing in some medical documentation that put him on a restriction, yes. Did you instruct Mr. Owensby, your supervisor, to do anything with Mr. Tostich concerning his medical restrictions? Yes. What did you tell I him? I instructed Mr. Owensby to talk to Mr. Tostich, let him know what his medical restrictions said, and ask him to either A, have his doctor validate what he's saying there, or B, get it released from there saying he could do his job. Because the restrictions said something, Owensby said he, they, he said he couldn't do his job, but there were limitations. Signed by a doctor? Whoever the doctor was. So there was a doctor. Yeah, I haven't seen the paper, so. So you wanted Mr. Tasha to take this back to his doctor and release him from the restrictions that he had? No. In order for Mr. Tostich to be able to work, Mr. Tostich told Mr. Oinsby, the only thing my document is for, it's for my hearing up top. Mr. Oinsby explained to Mr. Tostich, you can't give me a form and only expect me to look at one area. The bottom area says that you have these limitations. Do you or do you not have these limitations? And whatever the limitations were, because I don't know what they all were on the top of my head, okay, whatever those limitations were, he questioned whether or not he could do his job with those type of limitations and told him that if he could, then his doctor needed to say that. So at this time, you did know he had hearing restrictions? Hearing restrictions, yes. That's 5-10-2011, correct? Okay. Okay. At this point in time, knowing that he had hearing restrictions on 5-10-2011, did you contact the DRAC on Mr. Tosh's behalf? No. Why would I contact the DRAC? On 5-10-2011, you were aware he had restrictions, correct? I was aware that he was following, following for a restriction through injury comp. From, that was filed on 5-9, signed by Mr. Owensby, 2011, okay. correct?
in May of 2011, an estimate as to how long Mr. Owensby was a supervisor under you? Period of time and months. Can you answer that? I think maybe five months or six months. Okay. I'm going to give you page two, 00225 of the ROI. Okay. Please read your response to question number 21 in your affidavit. Yes, he gave me Miss. He gave it to Mr. Ornsby, who was a new supervisor and unsure of what to do with a CA2. I advised Supervisor Ornsby to forward it to injury compensation. Supervisor Ornsby was concerned about the physical limitations listed on the plan attached CA2. I advised him to discuss with Mr. Tostich the physical restrictions that were on the doctor's note attached to the CA2. Supervisor Ornsby said that Mr. Tostich told him he was not filing for those restrictions. I told Supervisor Ornsby to tell Mr. Tostich that he needed his doctor to give him a clearance to work. So there was a question that Mr. Tostich might have received.